Hey guys, so I've got a little bit of news and a really quick giveaway of a Pharmacy Beauty green screen sunscreen, which I have. Uh, it expires at the very end of this year in December, and it's about three quarters of the way full. I just know there's no way I'm going to have a chance to use all of it. And I thought I would uh, just do a little raffle drawing to see. So if you leave a comment, I will put your username into a little bowl on a piece of paper, and then I'll draw names. And whoever wins, I'll have you guys uh, message me your address, and I'll send it out to you. So I'm just hoping I can go to a good home for somebody that will have a chance to use it. And stay tuned throughout the summer. I'm going to do little giveaways like this uh, just because I'm so cheap. I hate the thought of anything going to waste. So anyway, so leave any kind of comment, and I'll do a drawing. So stay tuned for that. Um, one, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, uh, kind of in the news realm, there's a thread on Reddit called Makeup on the Cheap. I always look at it. They always post if there's good deals or sales going on somewhere. And recently the moderators from that posted that they had had several cosmetic brands, uh, emailing them, asking them, Hey, we'll give you this for free or Hey, we'll pay you. Uh, so you can put some kind of reviews on this thread about our products and, the moderators refuse to do it, obviously. So uh, I just kind of wanted to kind of commend them for doing the, the right thing as well. It's just crazy nowadays how hard it is to go and find reviews that are legitimate. I almost don't even believe most reviews I see anymore. So or somehow they're either getting the product for free or getting paid or something. Just, I don't know. So many of them are just not really genuine. So you really have to do your legwork on it. So that's why I'm excited for... Uh, no BS Beauty, and we're still growing every day, but uh, definitely, you know, love doing this, and I'm going to keep doing it. So anyway, I so I just thought I'd mention that. So you guys, just anything you see with a review, take with a grain of salt, because you just don't really know. So um, anyway, so then I wanted to talk about a few new products that are coming soon that I was kind of excited about. Uh, the Foreo brand, the brand that makes the silicone sponge cleansers, they have some new skincare products coming out soon, and they're getting more and more into skincare. They've got a product coming out soon called Serum Serum Serum. Sounds like a serum, I think. Uh, they've also got like a caviar mask and a lot of their new skincare products that are going to be kind of showing up later this year at beauty conventions and things like that. But a lot of them are uh, products that go along with their uh, already existing technology or their UFO. So kind of interesting to see what else they come out with. Uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills has another new eyeshadow palette coming out with Alyssa Edwards. Uh, looks like a lot of bright neon colors should be fun. And as well as new primer, eyeshadow primers. I think they've got like a white primer. And I think they've got a black primer. And I'm not sure if they have a nude primer yet or not. But it looks like they're going to come out with a lot of new primers. So that's pretty exciting as well. I just saw this on Sephora today. Dr. Jart has a couple new products a V7 antioxidant serum, and then a V7 antioxidant primer. So I ordered one of them, so I'll be reviewing that one soon. Haven't decided on the other one yet, but uh, love Dr. Jarton new stuff. So anyway, I thought I'd mention that. And then a, so another one I'm really excited about, Fresh. They're the brand that has a huge uh, mega seller with their soy face cleanser. It's pretty gentle. They've got a new one coming out called a Strawberry Exfoliating Face Cleanser. So... That should be exciting. It sounds pretty uh, exfoliating and natural, and I love strawberries, so I'll probably be checking that one out as well. And then, uh, if you don't know, Natasha Donona is coming out with a new Sunrise eyeshadow palette, which looks beautiful. Uh, it'll probably have the $119 price tag on it, so uh, I don't know if I'll be reviewing that one or not, or maybe just wait for it to go on sale, as some of them eventually do. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention some of those. Uh, Another news story I saw is that the brand called Natura is purchasing Avon for about $2 billion. And Natura, I hadn't heard of them, but they are the people that own the body shop uh, as well as Aesop. So they've got a huge company already. So once that uh, purchase is completed, they'll become the fourth largest beauty company in the world. So kind of crazy. Uh, but I thought that was interesting as well. Uh, and then one other acquisition, a Canadian cannabis product company called Canopy Growth is purchasing the London skincare company This Works. I'm sure you've seen some of their stuff. They tend to be in a lot of beauty boxes, uh, so it's not a super huge brand, but they're kind of known. I recognize the name. I've got some of their products from I've gotten from beauty boxes. 
So anyway, I thought they would, I would mention that because I think they're going to kind of turn that into a CBD type of beauty company focusing on products with CBD in them. So uh, anyway, so that was interesting. And then one other big news story that's being talked about lately is Wet n Wild. And uh, whether or not they're cruelty free or not, uh, they have been talking about how they're selling in China. However, since their products, a lot of them are made in China, apparently there's a technical loophole so if your product is made in China, you can sell your product as long as it fits a few regulations, which most of theirs does. Uh, you can sell in China without having to go through the animal testing process. So however, if your products are not made in China, you still have to go through the animal testing uh, part of selling in China. So it's kind of become a controversy over what and wild is actually as cruelty free as they say they are. So uh, definitely lots of Googling if you want to do it and read up. A lot of the cruelty-free blogs are talking about it. So it kind of, unfortunately, sounds like Wet n Wild might not be as animal-friendly as they say they are. So, um, yeah, so I'll definitely be doing some more reading and whatever else I find out, I'll let you know. And then one last story I thought I would talk about uh, really quick is... Uh, Dermatologists are saying, especially with summer, sun, things like that coming up this uh, year, that many people are not getting adequate protection from sun if you're using a moisturizer that contains a sunscreen. And uh, a couple examples would be like the Paul's Choice Resist Moisturizer with SPF. Uh, and then another example is the Alginist Alive. Uh, prebiotic balancing moisturizer with SPF and they're saying that it is for a few uh, reasons first of all people don't apply their moisturizer as liberally as they need to be doing to get adequate coverage so they're saying that when you're applying a moisturizer you're not applying it thick enough liberally enough and making sure to cover the correct amount of areas another reason the dermatologists state this is because many of these moisturizers only use an SPF level of 20 15 uh, anything below the 30. If you look at the Alive one, it's SPF 15, which uh, isn't very much. Uh, definitely 30 or above is the way to go. And then a, uh, another issue is that a lot of the moisturizers uh, contain avobenzone for their sun filters, or as one of them. And avobenzone is a sun filter that tends to break down rather quickly as opposed to uh, other in other sun filters such as zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. So a lot of them do contain that. And I think the Paul's Choice one did. Yeah, that one contains avobenzone. Ben, uh, let's see if this, no, this one's zinc oxide. So uh, that's another reason. And then it's also interesting, I read that moisturizers with SPF aren't regulated in the same way as a sunscreen is. So like this would be a sunscreen. Let's see, mineral tinted face lotion. Uh, I guess I'm thinking this one is more of a sunscreen than a moisturizer with SPF. So they're regulated differently. A moisturizer with SPF is just considered a cosmetic. However, if it's a sunscreen, it's marketed in the FDA department as a drug. So it's kind of interesting. So they might not be under the exact same amount of scrutiny a moisturizer with sunscreen as opposed to just something that's meant to be a sunscreen. So I kind of thought that was interesting as well. And uh, anyway, so kind of some of my stories, I thought it was, some of those were pretty interesting this week. There hasn't been a ton of beauty things going on really, but little things here and there. So anyway, definitely excited for a lot of the new products coming out. I'll definitely be checking those out and reviewing them. Uh, definitely be sure to uh, leave a comment uh, and then I can hopefully send you out the green screen. And I've got a few more things, especially things that are expiring in the next uh, six or seven months. So I want to make sure they get used and not thrown away because that would be bothersome. So anyway, uh, check out nobsbeauty.com. Check out my shirts at Teespring. I'm wearing one right now. And uh, thank you guys so much and I'll see you tomorrow.